Hi, I'm Mike. I'm with Smart Family of Cooling Products. We're going to be talking about a mega and electrically testing motors and compressors and other electrical instruments and, and even heating elements. There's a lot of confusion regarding megas, and what we wanted to do was try to uh, help people understand what they're for, how they're used, and also the safety concerns using a mega. So to start off with, what we have here is a very nice mega. I got it off of Amazon. It's the Klein Tools ET600. This is a nice mega because it compares to the Fluke, which costs three times more. This has all the same features as the Fluke, and it only costs about $160, whereas the Fluke is about $600. So with that said, this mega, or any mega for that matter, is a very dangerous tool. It's probably the most dangerous tool you can get because this tool can electrocute you. So whenever you use it, you have to be extra careful. Now there's a lot of different views as far as what is the rules that uh, apply whenever you can determine if something is uh, electrically good or if it fails. And so the rule actually comes from the people that make the instrument. And this company right here, Mega, is also the same company as Biddle and AVO and also what they, the standards that they have set also apply to all the rest of them. So that standard is right here. And so you'll notice for many years maintenance professionals have used the one mega ohm rule to establish the allowable lower limit for insulation resistance. You'll notice Insulation resistance should be approximately one mega ohm for every or each 1,000 volts of operating voltage with a minimum value of one mega ohm. So if you come up with a value below one mega ohm, you can safely say that it's faulty. Although I have seen motors and compressors operate with a lower value, it's not safe. And so I wanted to show everyone where this is coming from. You can find this if you Google online, a stitch in time mega, and this is a very nice document. It's about 20 or 30 pages of information with a lot of information. So if you get a chance and you want more information, look this up, a stitch in time. So what we're going to do is we're going to meg a compressor and we're going to meg the heating elements of this dehumidification unit. And so before we begin, I want to point out that you just don't hop in there and start megging instruments because you can damage things. So before I can actually meg these heating elements, I had to disconnect them from the SCR. Now we're at the panel, and what I want to point out to everyone, these are the wires that feed the energy or the voltage to the heating elements. And they go back to these terminal blocks, and you'll notice that I've electrically disconnected them from the SCR. That's because I did not want to back feed any voltage into the SCR. So you'll see that they're disconnected. And that's certainly true of VFDs also. Whenever you meg motors, condenser fan motors and things like that, blower motors, you want to disconnect the VFD. The back feed will damage the VFD. So now what we're going to do is actually show the use of the instrument. So what I like to do, the meter comes with multiple sets of leads. And some of the leads have alligator clips and some are touch point leads. I like to use the alligator clip for the ground terminal. That way I can clip it and leave it on. And then I can move from point to point using this one. So you'll notice how I've got it plugged in. And because this is a 460 volt machine, we're going to set this at 500 volts. If we had an electric motor that was a 
4160 volt motor or a 2300 volt motor, we would have to be using the 1000 scale. But because this is a 460 volt machine, we're going to use the 500 volt scale. And so to test the instrument, the first thing you always do is test the instrument. So what we're going to do, I'm going to first turn it to 500 and without the leads touching each other, I'm going to press and hold this button and you're going to see that it, the, it'll show the voltage climb right there. So here we go. 547 volts, 4000 mega ohms or infinity. And then you see it bleed or drop off. Now it's safe to touch those. You would not want to touch those while there's still voltage showing right here. So that's without them touching. Now, if I can get these to stay together. Oops. There we go. We're going to do the same test again. And you'll watch the voltage climb, but it won't go high because I have a dead short. There. It only took 9 volts to prove that there was a dead short or continuity to ground. So now I've tested the instrument and I know everything is working great. First we're going to do the compressor. This compressor trips the breaker when we run it. So I'm going to take the ground lead and I'm going to get on a ground terminal right here. There's three contact points where the wires feed electricity into this compressor. So first we're going to test the meter again before I go to those. So I'm going to go to any place that it's ground, but I'm not going to touch anything during the test. Now here we go. Again, it only took 9 volts to prove that there's continuity between that ground and this ground. Now we're going to make the motor that's inside this compressor. We have the meter up here so that it's easy to see. But when I push the test button, I need this meter to stay put. So I'm going to get on here nice and firm. And we'll push and hold that. You see that it built up to 547. And the voltage or the meg reading is ultra high, 4,000. So there's no continuity between that point and ground. We're going to do that on all three. So I'm going to get on this one now. Do the same thing. See it bleed off. So there's no continuity to ground. I'm going to do it one more time on the last connection point. Same thing. Now I'm going to Prove the meter one more time. Here, I'm going to press and hold. So, we've demonstrated there's no electrical connection between any of the windings to ground. But the problem with this compressor is it trips the breaker when we try to run it. And that's because what's wrong with this compressor is it's mechanically locked up. So, when we apply voltage to run this, it trips the breaker not because of an electrical fault, but because of, me of a mechanical fault. So now we're going to do some heating elements. Again, I'm going to take the ground lead and clip it to a good ground. And I'm going to test the meter again. Let me see if I can find a place that it will stay. So I'm going to go anywhere to ground without touching anything else. I'm going to test the meter. Again, you see the continuity in the meter. Now we're going to test the meter without touching. See it built up to 547, 4,000 mega ohms. So we just demonstrated the, the meter is still working good and with no problems. Now we're going to start making some of the heating elements. So I'm going to just hold 
onto one element. We're not connected to the SCR, so we're not going to backfeed and damage anything. And we're going to do the test again. Press and hold. You can't just press and get off of it. You have to press and hold and watch the voltage build up. Two hundred and sixty seven point nine megs demonstrating that we're above one meg therefore we're, it's good I'll do another one same thing two hundred and eighty eight point nine megs with five hundred volts of energy going to check for ground sometimes with these heating elements, the ceramic can get cracked. And with a little bit of moisture, they, they can provide a faulty reading or be damaged. And so this is how we test the electrical uh, heating elements. It's also how we test compressors. It's also how we test fan motors and other things that might be causing breakers to trip and be shorted out or grounded. Thank you for taking time to watch this video about the use of a Megger on Mike Green with Smart Family of Cooling Products. Please be safe.